As we read, as we study the scriptures, we view the life of our cinnamon-skinned savior, the brother from another, from the wrong side of the tracks, the HNIC, the head master being in charge, Jesus, our Lord, leader, and liberator. As he takes his 12 disciples on a journey of what social justice and inequality looks like and tries to reverse it by turning it on its head, his disciples in the midst of his campaign say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Jesus then goes forth and teaches them and says, when you pray, pray like this. Say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, both now and forevermore. Jesus with his revolutionary words, transformed the way that the disciples and anybody listening had heard prayers or prayers that were said. Roman government was in charge. They were favoring the have gods and ignoring the have nots. Jesus and his disciples belonged to that crew. As a matter of fact, the mission and the motives of Jesus was not merely spiritual, but it was about economic and personal upliftment to bring people back to the, the, the status that was stripped away from them because Rome had an agenda that was diametrically opposed to what God's agenda is. And so when Jesus says, our Father, which are in heaven, this is a direct assault on the kingdom of Caesar. For after all, Caesar thought that he was God on earth and individuals would have to bow down and to, and to acknowledge Caesar for his sovereignty and for his power. Caesar was just a king here on earth. But when Jesus said, our father which are in heaven, he is therefore declaring that there is one that is higher and there is one that is above Caesar and he is our father which are in heaven. And then he says this, give us our daily bread. And that was an amazing uh, point as well. It is up to the government to provide sustenance and to provide safety and security to its uh, citizens. Caesar's government was denying the commodity of bread to those Israelites or those early followers of Jesus Christ. And because his government was so uh, unjust, Jesus says, we will not ask you for our bread, but we will ask our God, which are in heaven, to give us our daily bread. In other words, God, you will deliver what we need in order for us to survive. We will not depend on the kingdoms of this earth or those individuals to give to us what you can give to us. And so in other words, what we're also saying is this, is that we will also call out those systems of injustice that are not providing the things that are supposed to be provided to its earthly citizens. Caesar's kingdom was a kingdom of tyranny. It was a kingdom of, of dictatorship and ignoring of the least of these. So Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts if we forget our debt to us. The Caesar's kingdom also charged and taxed the people heavily and they were left and found themselves in debt. Reminds me similar to what we have in American capitalism that requires individuals to be in debt as the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. As a matter of fact, it's called the rich and the rest of us. We are called here just to, we are left here just to survive on the means that we can, the little crumbs that fall the table. And so here Jesus is saying, we God, please forgive us our debts. For we understand and know that Caesar's kingdom is involved in, in, in loan sharking and abusing an abusive, an abusive um, uh, way of doing things. And by forgiving us our debts, we in turn realize that we must forgive those that are indebted to us as well. It is an economic system that is built on love, charity, and justice. That if I have been forgiven, then it's only right that I turn and forgive others. And as Jesus continues to go, when he says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not in temptation is the most powerful point in the prayer. And this is the prayer that all of us must, must repeat. Lead us not into the temptation to become like the empire and to do the things that the empire does. Lead us not into the temptation of succumbing to what the empire wants us to be to assimilate, to lose our identity, to not call out injustice, but to go along with it, to look and watch as protesters walk by 
to look at watch as innocent people are gunned down and murdered. Lord, lead us not in temptation. Deliver us from evil. The evil that God is praying and Jesus is teaching them to deliver them from is the evil of the empire, the evil of Rome's kingdom, Rome's values, and Rome's status. And we need deliverance from American capitalism, American white supremacy, and American ideologies that teaches us to step on the poor as we climb our ways to the top. Lord, deliver us from the temptation to succumb to evil. And as God delivers us from the temptation to succumb to evil, he tells us to also pray for his kingdom to come. In other words, don't come later. Don't come in a few days. But we are declaring that the kingdom of God is here now. That the kingdom of God can be manifested here in our hearts and, and in our society. Injustice is not an excuse to say that, oh, these things have to happen before Jesus Christ comes back. That is a poor excuse because the Jesus that I serve, the Jesus that I follow, says I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. If his message was solely for the future, then he would have been irrelevant. And right now there are churches, there are pastors, there are individuals who are absolutely irrelevant because they preach a doctrine that says these things have to happen for Jesus Christ can come. These things don't have to happen. Mothers don't have to lose their sons prematurely. Daughters don't have to die at an early death. Fathers should not have to bury their children. Health care should not be something that we beg for. Uh, being overly taxed is not something that we should be crying out for. These are not the things that God has designed and we can live in a peaceful way and we can live together if we stand up against injustice and raise our voice. And so let's say that prayer together. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, both now and forevermore. This is Jamie K. with Raise Your Voice. Peace.